right, um, for this section, we have just a few more things to talk about, and then we'll be done with this chapter um, of just introduction of statistics basics. So let's see, let's see what we got here. All right, so for this lecture, we're going to be talking about what experimental designs are, and then the two types of experimental designs that we'll see, which is completely randomized and randomized block designs. So for experimental designs, this is where we impose treatments and controls and observe characteristics and take measurements. So again, we're establishing causation. For example, researchers wants to investigate whether taking aspirin regularly reduces the risk of heart attack. 400 men between the ages of 50 and 84 are recruited as participants. Men are divided randomly into two groups. One group takes aspirin, the other is a placebo. They take one pill for three, day, for three years um, and they don't know if it's placebo or aspirin. And at the end of the study, the researchers count the number of men in each group who have had heart attacks. So that is an example, again, of an experiment. What we want to do is delve into a little bit more about what experiments mean. So for our experiment, we have experimental units. That's what we're performing the experiment on. And if it's humans, we call them subjects because it's not nice to call a human a unit. So for example, with our men that we just talked about, we could see this and um, we could see that our experimental units were subjects because they would be the 400 men. Within that, we want to look at three different things. We want to control. So two or more treatments should be compared. Um, we should be able to randomize. So the experimental units or the subjects should be randomly divided into groups. And that avoids unintentional selection bias. And we should be able to replicate. And that's a big one, right? So there's a lot of studies out there that say a lot of things. But if you can't replicate not only the experiment itself, but the results, then it's really not worth anything. So replication um, is where a sufficient number of, of experimental units or subjects should be used to ensure that it does create groups that resemble each other closely enough to increase the chances of detecting differences. Now, a lot of times with our experiments, what we have is our control group, and sometimes we call them the placebo group. So a placebo is just an inert or innocuous medical substance, and that's usually done for example, with the aspirin and placebo idea. So for our example, our treatment group would have been the group that was taking the aspirin and the control group would have been those that take, were taking the placebo. Now within our experiment, we do have four things that we should be able to pull out of an, an example. For example, the characteristic of the experimental outcome that is to be measured or observed, that's a response variable. The factor is a variable whose effect on the response variable is of interest in the experiment. Levels, the possible values of a factor, and the treatment is each experimental condition. Now, I know that was blah, 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 blah. So let's see what that means. For our example of the men, the response variable is what's happening. What are we measuring at the end of the experiment? What are we looking at? And that's if they've had a heart attack. Now the factor is what are we doing to them? We're making them take a pill. Now there's either they're taking the aspirin or the placebo and that's the level. So there's only two treatments, the aspirin or the placebo. Now that's a, just a straightforward experiment, but what if we have something a little bit more detailed? So take a minute to read this. Okay, remember you can always put this on pause if you need to. All right, so let's think about what the response variable would be. So we're at the end of the experiment, what are we trying to see? And we're trying to see if the drivers can see the sign when they first see the sign. So what are we doing to the, in this case, the subjects, the drivers? Well, we're changing the signs, right? And that's either the size of the sign or the material of the sign. So now when we're talking about the levels, what this means is what about the size and what about the material? 
So for the size, there are three sizes we're looking at, small, medium, and large. And for the material, there is four different types of material. And all it said was one, two, three, and four. So in all, there will be 12 treatments. So what do I mean by 12 treatments? Well, here's a pretty good example. So we make a table. We have materials one through four. We have our size, small, medium, and large. So we are going to have 12 different per combinations of those, right? One and small, material two and small, three and small, three and medium, two and large, four and large. So four times three, there's going to be 12 treatments in all. The last thing we're going to talk about in this section, and just to get rid of all the rest of our um, vocabulary, is the difference between completely randomized design and randomized block. Now, what we've talked about um, at, so far is just completely randomized. We just randomly put the men in either the placebo group or the aspirin group. We randomly put the drivers in whichever size and whichever material it was made out of, right? So we just completely random, randomly put them in that. A randomized block design, though, is where we randomly put them into different blocks. So the treatments are separated within each block. So think of the drivers could be um, a lurking variable. A lurking variable is something that could happen that we're not paying attention to. Could be just their age or their experience in driving. So with the drivers, we could split them up first into how long they've been driving and then put the experiment on them. So we could be running four different experiments of 12 treatments each, right? So here's an example. Two different options are under consideration for comparing the lifetimes of four brands of flashlight battery, should say battery, flashlight battery, using 20 flashlights. So option one, we could divide 20 flashlights into four groups of five flashlights each, and then randomly assign each group to use a different brand of battery. That's just a randomized design. We're just splitting the flashlights and the batteries, right? Um, however, if we use the 20 flashlights, and there are five different brands of four flashlights each. So we're saying that, well, it could be the flashlight brand, right? That could be the lurking variable that's causing one flashlight to use the batteries more than the other. So we split them up into brands and then use a different brand of battery within each group of those. So that is a randomized block design. And that's the um, example of randomized design, randomized block. We are finally finished with all these vocabularies. I'll see you in the next section.